Pinch pots, the place where all ceramics courses begin. First thing to do when making a pinch pot is to cut yourself off a solid block of clay. And I'm not gonna just grab it with my hand, I'm gonna take the wire tool and cut myself off a chunk. I may have to cut off more than I actually need to keep the block in a regular form. So I'll cut that and then cut it in half. And that's the piece I'll work with. Always be sure to rewrap the clay as soon as you're done cutting your pieces off. Starting with your solid block of clay, you're going to tap it against the wear board to form the basic shape that you wish to start from. Pinching is very intuitive and you can start from whatever base form you like and end up with whatever form that you wish. So I'm going to show you here how to start with a round sphere and make basically a round pot that I then alter to be a more irregular form. There's no rule that says you have to start with a sphere. If you want to end up with a rectangular pot, then maybe consider starting with a square piece of clay. Either way, you just need to be sure that that starting piece of clay is solid and avoids any crevices or inconsistencies that could cause you trouble later. Watch for these creases here. Because those are places where you could introduce weaknesses like air bubbles or just weaknesses in the, in the folding of the clay that could cause cracks and um, thin spots in your pot later on. So you want to smooth those out as best you can. The little micro crevices and stuff, those are fine. It's just the, um, the bigger places where it's folding over on itself that, uh, that you want to look out for. Okay, and then you can also roll your piece on the wear board and give it a nice bottom like that. Okay, so the first thing is to open it up with your thumb. Now I'm not going very deep. I'm just pressing in and rotating. So press, rotate. This is where you're gonna set your rhythm for the whole pot. You're gonna press or pinch and rotate. And you only rotate enough to overlap the thumb or the pinch print by half. So you're not rotating over here and pressing in over there and there because you're gonna get these you know, inconsistencies in between your thumbprints. So you wanna overlap the thumbprint by half so you're seeing a more even consistency. Okay, and I don't want this little mountain in the middle to keep going, so I'm gonna make sure my thumb is, is actually hitting the interior of the form. So pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate. I think I'm about half an inch from the bottom or about a finger's width from the bottom of the, of the wear board. So here we are. Nice and thin on the bottom, good thickness there. Um, very thick walls. So what we're gonna try to do is move all of this clay on the outside up. And we're going to have a nice even walled form coming out from the base. So we're going to put it back together. Um, to do that, I'm going to score and slip. But in this case, just get a little water and score. Now you will not be cutting your pot in half. Obviously, you want to just keep your pot whole. Um, because any time you cut it apart, you could, you know, you're just making more work for yourself. But, uh, but if you want to make one, the first one, just to try, 
you could cut it in half and just see where your thicknesses are. So I'm gonna be pretty rough with this because I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth it out later. So I just wanna be sure that it's really well connected again. Okay. So now back uh, now I'm gonna pinch uh, on those points where there's a lot of thick clay, and I'm gonna pinch and rotate. Same deal, but my fingers are down underneath that bottom edge of the pot, right against the wear board. And my thumb is right down along that outer corner of the bowl of this pot. So, and this sand is really not doing much. It is just hanging out. Okay, and we're gonna do like maybe two laps of that. Okay, so now where are we at? Now, we have a, a nice thin section right here uh, at the base that's the right thickness. So we've moved that clay up already from, from where it was. It used to be out here. Now it's moved up. Um, that's awesome. So we're going to keep moving that clay up and we'll get a pot that's somewhere up, up here. Okay. So that's where the finger has been pinching right there, touching the wear board, and the thumb is right there. Next, we're going to move it up to here and we'll just keep going up. But we need to go all the way around the pot. So now I'm going to be just slightly up off of the base of the wear board. So now it's the same idea, pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate. And you try to have a consistent pressure with each pinch so that you don't get a thin spot where you pinch really hard and then a, a thick spot where you, you kind of slacked off on your pinching pressure. You want to have it just nice and consistent. Okay. One lap around there. You can see it's starting to crack. So I'm gonna get my finger just wet, no sponge. Just a little bit of water. So here I'm pinching and bringing together to thicken that rim, stabilize it so it doesn't keep cracking like that. This is just to stabilize that upper rim, thicken it up a little bit so it's not trying to flop around. Okay, so we pinched slightly above the uh, wall or above the wear board now. So what you see is an almost consistent wall now. You get a little bit of a thickness up here at the top and uh, we'll be able to continue to thin that out. But it's also flaring out here more than I'd like. And maybe I want it to be more of a vertical form. So, and come up straighter. So I'm gonna actually start to, to uh, kind of collar it in is what we would say.
So now I'm gonna take my two hands, I'm gonna be pinching and bringing together uh, down on the side of the wall. So just like I was doing up here, I was pinching and bringing together. I'm gonna be doing that now, pinching and bringing together. But I don't want it to fold out like that too dramatically. So I'm gonna be a little bit more gentle than that. Um, but the same thing, pinch, bring together, rotate. Pinch, bring together, rotate. So it's, when I pinch, it's thinning it. When I bring it together, it's tightening it. And then I rotate onto the next section. So I'm thinning it, I'm bringing it higher, and I'm working that all the way around. So I don't want any of these creases. So if you get any creases, maybe, maybe you need to back off of that step where you're bringing them together. Let's uh, thin out the walls a little bit more. So I'm gonna be working down at the base and I'm just going to be thinning by pinching, pinch and rotate. And then I'm moving up the sides. So a pinch and pinch bring together but now I'm focused more on just the pinching. So just the pinching with a slight squeeze together is going to thin the walls out and bring them up at the same time. Crack there, I gotta seal that up. Notice I haven't used any water except for that one time to, to uh, smooth the rim out again. So you don't want to be introducing any water unless it's absolutely necessary because uh, it's going to weaken the clay. The wetter the clay, the less it wants to stand up and the more it's going to try to fall over and sink down on you. So now I'm actually working the, the upper rim. If you have a low spot on the side, try doing a, a squeeze, pinch and squeeze to bring up that height. So if you got a low spot, pinch and bring it together and work that clay back up. Okay, so now we have a nice thin walled piece. Uh, it's vertical. A little bit of a thin spot there, but nice thick up on the rim. That gives us options of how we want to shape the rim. Um, and we've got a decent amount of clay uh, down here, but you could always thin that out even a little bit more, um, or maybe bring it down and give it a foot. Maybe this part is gonna be something more like that, or uh, you know, if you wanna angle it to the inside, something like that. But now we have options. That's great. But you can see how much is distorting now. It's very flexible. So 
that's my sign. I've got a thin wall and I've got really floppy clay now because it's so thin and it's still wet. Um, that's my sign to take a break, let it stiffen up and come back to it later when it's a little bit more firm. So I'm gonna just seal these two parts back together and I'll walk away. I'm gonna set this aside. If you wanna come back to your work later and uh, have it be stiffer, um, you wanna let it dry so you don't wanna wrap it too tightly with plastic, but you don't want that top edge to dry out. Before you walk away, give that just a spritz of water with your finger, just a little bit. Remember, no water in the center. And actually press these down right around the rim. And that water that you just spread on there is going to hold it in place. Um, but so that is gonna let this dry really efficiently without uh, the top edge drying out. So you can see here, this is if you want it to stiffen up quickly, uh, but still have the top rim workable. This is if you're gonna walk away uh, for several hours or a day. This is still gonna dry out a little bit. Um, it's still gonna evaporate through the little cracks in the plastic. But, um, but it should be workable even tomorrow. This one, I'll wanna come back within an hour or two and, uh, and keep working and refining the surface. Okay, it's been about an hour and this piece is still very flexible. This piece with just the rim wrapped quite stiff, except for the rim up here. So down here, I can move this around and it doesn't really flex. It does a little bit, but it doesn't flex nearly as much as that one right there. So now is a good time to uh, refine the form and thin it out. If you need to thin out any uh, thick areas, like down here at the base, this is uh, needs some work here. So you could reach in with your hand here to support and then pinch around this bottom edge here to give us a foot. You can see where my cut lines are still showing up. So maybe all that scoring and slipping wasn't quite enough. But now is a good time to, uh, to address that bottom because uh, the top half is stiffened up so I can, I can actually flip it upside down without it breaking or uh, kind of warping too much. Okay, so. I don't know, maybe you do some, some interesting form up here as well but you can do the same process of pinch and rotate uh, to thin out this foot and, and make it stand up a little taller off the table. Um, notice though that you're gonna be forcing that bottom back into the bowl. So if you want a smooth form on the inside or something that's gonna drain water nicely, then uh, you'll wanna push that back down. And uh, and now is maybe a good time to, uh, to start addressing the surface as well. So if you wanted a smooth pinched surface, all you gotta do is just keep doing that same uh, process of just thinning out the thick sections 
um, smoothing that. If you want to smooth it out even more, you could take your metal rib or one of these rubber ribs and you can actually start using this as a, as a shaping tool as well as a, a surfacing tool. So, you know, supporting on the inside with a hand and then running the smooth edge of the rib on the outside. You're able to get you know, a much smoother surface there. It's not perfect, so you could you could spend some more time working it. Of course, you could use your serrated rib to give it a texture. And the rubber rib, just to show you what these are like. You know, they're nice for that smoothing step too. Just like the, rub the metal rib, the smooth edge of the metal rib is fine. So the angle matters. If you're smoothing, you wanna have it right up against the side of the form like that. If you're out here perpendicular, you know, you're actually gonna be scraping. And so you can see here the scraping is pulling out that grit and the grog and making streaks through the surface. The smoothing, uh, where you're angling it more along the surface, is, is working nicely there. So it's it's quite a different uh, move whether you're, you know, smoothing along the edge of the pot versus scraping up the side. Very different. Okay, but now is also a good time for shaping. Say. Um, you don't want a round pot. Not everyone needs to make round pots. There's plenty of other shapes out there. So once it's stiffened, you don't want it very stiff, but uh, if it's just sat for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, uh, I'm outside, so the wind is blowing, the sun is shining, everything is drying really fast. Um, but if you're in a basement or, or somewhere, maybe it's gonna take a little longer, but, um, you can still work the form uh, really nicely and uh, maybe maybe give it something a little more interesting of a form. So, you know, you could, you could indent it, you could fold it in. But now is a good time because it's, um, it's still flexible, but it's stiff enough that it's not, um, it's not trying to fall apart every time you touch it. So maybe, maybe we make it symmetrical. I don't know, maybe not, but uh, yeah, once you get the, once you get the general form you want, it's maybe something more interesting, then you can, you can go back and refine it. So um, that's why we kept this upper rim soft is because it, being the most exposed section, it tends to dry from the rim down to the foot, um, just based on airflow in this in this environment. Um, so if you want it to dry evenly, you gotta wrap the rim and protect it, keep it wet. And then that's naturally gonna counteract the, the drying system. Okay, so I'm gonna keep uh, stretching this clay out little ribs into the section. If you want to give it, you know, like facets. Something like that. And then once we've got it refined, Generally, we'll let it dry even more and then come back and do some surface work. Don't forget to uh, keep your top rim wet and to wrap your piece whenever you're not working on it.
Okay, so I had to walk away from this for a couple hours to do something else. So I wrapped it up really tight with several layers of medium or lightweight drop cloth. And uh, I, I left the, the beginning layers of these coverings on as well. So these should still be almost the same moisture content that they were when I left them because I had multiple layers of plastic. So what I wanted to come back to uh, show y'all is how um, you, could, you could take the idea of pinching and make any kind of form you want. There's no reason that we have to make round pots. Um, and even if you're somebody who wants to get into figure sculpting or something really complex in terms of form uh, like that, then you could use the pinching method as the way of getting uh, a basic shape and then go into altering later. Now there's plenty of other ways to work with clay, but um, pinching is just like this very accessible, like meditative and um, enjoyable way to work with clay. So, so you can see this top edge is still quite soft because we added that extra water and wrapped it up really well. So the first thing I do when I unwrap something is just kind of check the, the uh, stiffness of it. Is it, uh, is it still as soft as I want it or did it harden up a little bit over time? It seems like we're maybe just slightly stiffer than when I left, but not too bad. Um, so I'm going to kind of I'm watching these cracks here and I'm just going to repair those by kind of squeezing and pinching over them. So uh, that's something you kind of constantly have to do. Depending on your clay, this clay is really groggy and so it's going to try to crack a little bit more like that than, than your clay probably will. But that's something that, that you just need to watch as you work. Um, not letting those surface cracks turn into bigger openings. Okay, so we can kind of, we have that thick rim, which is really great because now it gives us those options like I was talking about, how we could uh, really add some accents to the form just by, you know, addressing that lip, addressing that rim flare, whether it curls in or out or both in this case, in different places. And if that is cracking, like over here, it's, it's giving me some small cracks as I work that. They're opening up more and more. So if that's happening, you know, dab a little bit of water on there and really pinch and squeeze that back together. Smooth those out before they become worse. Okay. You probably notice as you add that water, you can take a wet finger or um, your small sponge with a little moisture and you can you can really smooth the surface of, a, of clay out and it'll kind of uh, cosmetically address those cracks. It doesn't doesn't actually repair cracks just adding water like that but um, it can lead to a nice smooth surface. However, it can also be a little counterproductive because with the sponge, you can see here as I sponge away, more and more of the grit is coming up to the surface. You can see that grit right here is just a little bit more pronounced because the sponge is taking away the smaller particles and, and revealing the larger ones. So you'll actually get a smoother surface working by hand um, because your hand isn't going to be brushing away the smaller particles as much as the sponge would. And you can kind of press those larger particles of grit back into the clay. So there you go. It's not perfect, but good enough for demo work. And this side is a little stiff, so there might have been maybe a hole in the plastic or something. So I'm going to try not to um, work that too much. Once, once the clay is stiff, it's, uh, it's going to be more prone to cracking if you try to force it into a different shape. So I'm not going to try to change the shape as much as just give it a little accent 
right there. Yeah, this whole side is much stiffer. Okay. When it's stiffer, we can um, really work on the surface nicely. So you can see here, there's still some uh, texture from the serrated rib that I was gonna come back and smooth out. So I'm actually gonna take one of my rubber ribs. If you don't have a rubber rib, a metal rib is gonna work just fine. Or you can even use a wooden rib this um because we're not really trying to scrape the surface this is a wooden rib um we just want to actually smear some clay around on the surface and get it smeared into those little crevices to smooth out the low spots so i'm supporting on the back side and just at with with the rib at like a 45 degree angle Kind of compressing that surface. Now that's taking on a bit of a concave form. But you can see that's already, you know, starts to look almost like a, a slab piece, a slab built piece. Like it's a flat plane there. It's, it's coming up. Okay, so I'm going to do the same on this side. A little water on the surface is fine. Actually helps the tool slide across. And it helps actually loosen some of those smaller particles up, which allows you to move them across the surface so that they fill in the crevices. Okay, and then you can see you got this kind of fin in the middle. So if you want to clean that up, you just come back and forth a couple times. You can even take the metal rib, really shallow angle. Then a nice crisp edge there. Great. So that's not so bad. That's pretty smooth, right? If that's what you're going for. If you want to leave a pinch texture, that's great too. There's a lot of people who get really into that kind of um, worked looking surface, something that shows your process. So it's kind of your personal preference there. Um, I am going to take the sponge and we got to address this foot because this foot is ugly. It's got, it's got cracks. It's a little bit too stiff to really move around efficiently. I added a bit too much water there, so I'm going to dab that off. But um, we've got to do something with this. So let's see. It's pretty stiff. I can still move it a little bit with that extra water. So maybe I'll try to coax it into more of a square shape. That's all I'll do. But here, where it's trying to split, and it's trying to split on me right there. So I'm going to pinch and force that together. And I'm going to try to flare out those corners. And maybe a little spot halfway through. Okay, this, this one is a big split back here. That's where I cut it in half before. And now it's, it's coming back to haunt me. So you can see that crack right there. Um, if you got a bad crack like that, say from cutting your pot in half, um, then you're going to need to actually do something more extreme like score and slip in the crack. Now I don't need to actually add slip to this because I just added water to the surface of the clay. So there's actually slip forming on the surface of the clay itself. So I just need to do some good scoring, make sure that those parts are going to knit together like a zipper almost, and then really pinch and force those two parts together. Give it a lot of force in the um, bringing together. And then just dab up the surface, make sure that's solid there. Okay.
and then um, let's see how that let's just see how that sits on the table before I get too far ahead of myself. Not so bad. This part of the lip really, really took a dive on me. But uh, not so bad. The inside's still okay. So um, you can just tap it on the table a couple times to give it a flat surface. If that's what you want. Um, you could also consider, you know, taking a knife and doing a, like a scalloped foot, so you could cut away sections to uh, lift the form up off the table a little bit. It looks something like that. Not a huge difference, but um, sometimes that can be a really nice, elegant touch if you're looking for something elegant. And you know, you could cut away at multiple scallops, multiple points there. Let me just take a little more off of that time. And you can see where I've cut, it's quite gritty. Um, but where I pinched just kind of a smoother surface. So um, that's kind of an advantage of uh, pinching and working with your hand as opposed to a sponge uh, or, or smoothing as opposed to scraping with the rib is to kind of force that grog back down into the clay so it doesn't come to the surface and make it rough. So I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit more. See, if I don't add water and I just use my finger, I can get a pretty smooth surface. If I start to add water, that's what removes the small particles and makes it rough. Okay. Yeah, that's looking good. If it doesn't sit flat, you know, you can, you can try to address that now. And then um, just do your final shaping here. Uh, and you're done in terms of forming. Now you can always continue to refine this and as it dries you'll be able to push harder on the surface and smooth more aggressively um, and you can you can continue doing that as many times as you want until you get the surface you you are looking for. Um, sometimes it's nice to leave a little texture though and kind of leave those marks of your process, uh, leave the marks of the clay in your fingers but um, that's a personal preference, so you'll have to decide when enough is enough. I'm going to go ahead and do another round of refinement because I don't think I'm quite finished yet. I'm not satisfied with the piece as it is, so I'm working on a foam slab, and I'm going to take the wooden knife and just go in and clean up and accentuate all of the little details that I want to come through on the piece. Starting with this little crevice, I'm just pushing the knife in. Notice I'm not dragging the knife. I'm using it more like a stamp almost to press in on the surface of the clay. And that's giving me a cleaner line uh, with no jagged edges um, that you might get those jagged edges if you were to draw the knife across the surface. Here I'm adding in additional uh, clay and kind of pushing a little bit of clay, pinching it out into a rib that's sticking out of the side of the pot. Um, and I'm just refining that line of the rib, making it nice and clean and straight, not too lumpy. And here I'm taking the butt end of the, the wooden knife, the rounded end, to uh, give a little crease near the lip of the pot. And again, I'm using it like a stamp, um, not dragging it across the surface of the clay, but instead just pressing it in to give a clean line there. The lip and the foot of a pot tend to be the places where your eye goes to first. So it's really important you take the extra time uh, in your refining steps to accentuate those lines on the foot and the rim. 
Here I'm working on the, the other side of the rim. This kind of demonstrates the usefulness of that foam slab um, because I can turn the pot around in this refining stage without worrying about damaging the part that I just refined. So if you have a foam slab, um, that's a handy thing to work on. Otherwise, uh, any cloth will work. So here I am noticing a small crack in the rim, but as I, as I open that up and try to patch it, I'm noticing that crack goes much farther down than I want. Um, and I think that that's a remnant of me cutting this piece in half uh, during the building process to show you the wall thickness. So I'm going to do a lot of work now in this stage to make sure that this comes back together and doesn't persist through the drying process. If I were going to fire this piece, I would be really concerned now that this crack is going to show up after I fire it um, as the clay shrinks. So I'm going to do a lot of work here. I can still save this, but I need to be sure that I really address the entire crack. And I, I'm starting with the scoring tool here scoring really deeply on both sides and scoring down past the end of the visible crack. So scoring into the part of the pot that looks like it's still bonded together. And I'm, and I'm dipping my scoring tool in the water bucket to kind of create a slip on the surface of the pot as I score. And so I'm going to just take some time to really work that. It seems counterintuitive, but sometimes it's helpful to open those cracks up farther than they already are just to allow your tool to get in there and, and really score deeply. But now I was satisfied with the scoring and I got enough slip built up on the surface um, by using just a, a couple dabs of water from the bucket. Now I'm pushing it back together, pinching it and compressing it and just making sure that it's really stuck as best as I can. I'm going to work this back and forth. Notice I'm pushing from both sides with my fingers. So the clay is really forced towards the other part. And then that, that particular part is a little bit wetter than the rest of the pot now. So uh, I just want to kind of clean up the mess, but then I want to move away and not work on that part um, for a little while, let it dry and set up. Okay, now I flip the pot upside down and I need to refine the foot a little bit further. Like I said a minute ago, the lip and the foot are the two places where your eye goes to first on a pot. And um, the same goes for sculpture as well. The edges and the profile really attract the eye. So I'm going to refine the points of the foot similar at, to the way I did on the, on the lip. In this case, that, that line of the rib down the wall of the pot kind of disappears just above the foot. And then the foot is kind of a mushy form. It's not as defined. So I'm going to add in a little piece of clay, just a little coil to give myself enough clay there to continue that rib line all the way down. So you can do this in many different ways. Like you can add on additional parts of clay to your pinch pot after it's in this almost leather hard phase. To do that, you just need to be sure to score and slip really well on the surface of the dry piece. For the coil, I'm pulling clay directly out of the bag. So it's still quite wet and it's easy to manipulate. It's easy to push into that scored section. So I don't actually need to score too much on the wet clay coil. I just need to score the surface of the drier pot um, to give it some tooth to bond to. But you can see that that now is giving a much cleaner line directly from the lip down to the foot. So it's a, it's a much more defined form than I had just a minute ago. Now you can also work the surface. A lot of times our pinch pots have that pinched lumpy texture. And uh, that might be the right thing for your pot and, and for the um, piece that you're making. But sometimes that becomes just a default that people uh, rely on because they don't want to do the work to refine the surface. 
a lot of artists rely on the kiln and glaze and firing process to provide a rich surface on their pieces. But since we're focusing on greenware in this class, we need to develop the skills to be able to have a really refined piece in the greenware stage. So that's going to give you some advantages if you do go on to take a ceramics course with kilns. And I think there's some really amazing options that are available to us just using wet clay. So in this step, I'm just using the same process that I did in the previous refining step, using a serrated rib to smooth out the lumps and bumps in the pinched surface. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of water on a smooth rib, like a metal rib or a rubber rib, and that's going to polish it up and give you the smoother surface that you see on the left-hand side. Now there's a lot of other surface treatments that we could talk about later, including like stamps and textures, uh, burnishing, and other processes like that. Okay, so here we are refining that form, pushing the grit back in to the surface. And here we are doing the same thing with the metal rib, using the smooth surface and a little bit of water to smear some of the finer particle clay back into the gritty crevices. And then here we are with the final form. I spent about another hour refining this and accenting the details on the foot and the lip. And you can see there's not very many marks left from the pinching process. So I hope that goes to show that you can use the pinching process to make any form that you like.